The village of Mpanta sits on the shores of Lake Bangweulu in the north of Zambia. The small community relies mainly on fishing. Musema Tesk gets up at 3 a.m. every morning and sets out into the lake. He returns at 7 a.m. and sells his catch to villagers for between one and two dollars. For him, a little electricity is going a long way. His village in Panta was chosen for a pilot project to see how rural Zambia can benefit from electricity. These solar panels generate 60 kilowatts in power and provide electricity for eight hours per day. 450 households have been connected for no charge and householders pay a flat fee of 30 kwacha or five dollars per month for power. The project was funded by the Global Environment Facility, GEF, and implemented by UNIDO and UNEP in conjunction with the Rural Electrification Authority in Zambia. The aim of the project is to improve living standards and encourage local businesses to develop and grow. UNIDO seeks to foster inclusive and sustainable industrial development in the areas it targets. We look at providing people not only with the minimum necessary amount of electricity for a valve or just for illumination, but to give them the opportunity of having an amount of electricity that will allow them to transform their local products. So to add value to their local uh, economy and in that way be able to pay for the electricity and increase the income of the, the local economy and uh, make this electricity service as a sustainable business. Today, there are signs it's happening. Restaurants and bars play music and show television programs to attract customers. Shopkeepers are able to sell cold drinks during the day. Villagers are also less likely to use harmful kerosene to light their homes at night. The power Musema receives at home helps his son to study in the evenings. Nearby, Regina Chawe uses her power to make fritters at night that she can sell the next day. There are currently plans for a community cold storage. Zambia has set an ambitious target of achieving 50% access to electricity among the population by the year 2030. The project at Mpanta required government and outside assistance to get off the ground, but its implementation has given a boost to similar projects which hope to attract private funding. What is positive from that project is that we've learned a lot of lessons and as I speak to you today, out of that project we are now designing two similar projects and the total capacity is now 500 kilowatt. So from 60 kilowatt we are stepping up to 500 kilowatt. Most of Zambia's energy comes from hydropower plants built 40 years ago. Since the end of 2012, this plant at Shiwangandu has provided 24 hours of power to a remote community in the country's north. It has transformed life in many different ways. Electrification has also benefited local services. Timber School is attracting better teachers and children are learning on computers at a young age. This place at the moment is just as good as Lusaka. We have everything, we have fridges, we have everything because of electricity. The local health clinic can now rely on machinery that requires electricity. This suction machine helps ensure safer deliveries during the night. It's already proved a lifesaver.
The nearby village of Calalantekwe has also been transformed by the electricity. New buildings show an increased sense of confidence in the future. Shops, restaurants and a hair salon have sprung up to service passing trucks and the village's growing population. The hydropower project has also created 13 permanent jobs for local inhabitants. Zesco Managing Director Cyprian Chitundu believes that one day small-scale power plants will link together with larger power stations and provide a network of energy that spreads across the whole country. If the one megawatt can do so much, then it gives us, a, puts a smile on our faces, then we can do more. We can go, go and do the four megawatts, then we can even do the 10 megawatts. Unido is not just targeting agricultural areas. The city of Kitwe lies in Zambia's Copper Belt region. This area relies mainly on hydropower energy that is transported from the south of the country. Today, there are plans to turn this field next to a timber mill into a one megawatt biogas plant. Making the most of the discarded wood, it hopes to produce enough green power to run the plant and supply energy to the surrounding area. This reliable energy source will help guarantee local jobs. The project is run in conjunction with the Copper Belt Energy Corporation and Copper Belt Forestry. This kind of project can be set up anywhere in Zambia where need arises for power. And it's a technology which can be replicated. It's a technology that is modular so it can start small and grow big, but also it is reliable and it helps also to clean the environment because its main feedstock is wood waste. Hundreds of thousands of Zambians have not yet had the opportunity to benefit from an electricity connection. They still rely on charcoal to light and heat their homes and see them through the night. It's too early to speak of a new dawn in the country, but projects like those at Mpanta, Shiwangandu and Kitwe appear at least to offer light to millions of people at the end of what's been a very long tunnel.